Hi, this is Rob Graham at Learning Craft. And this time around, I wanted to take a few minutes and share with you some thoughts on how we attach scripts to objects within the Flash environment. Now, as you already are probably aware, there are different scripts that go on different things in Flash. For example, we can attach scripts to frames in the timeline. We can also attach scripts to buttons. And we can attach scripts to movie clips. While each script has a specific function, where you place the script oftentimes matters more than the script itself. Well, let me explain that to you. For example, if I were to go up here and click on the first frame of my timeline, just say, what that does down here, if I look at my Actions tab, it tells me that the Actions is being associated with that specific frame. Therefore, if I went in here and wrote a script, let's just use our old friendly standby the stop script, then what will happen now is this script is attached to that frame and will be obeyed by the playback head as it moves along. Pretty much anything we do within the timeline with a script is really for the benefit of the playback head. It's to tell it how to navigate, stop here, go here, whatever it is, or load in some information in the background. Make sure that these variables get loaded, whatever. But pretty much its job as the playback head goes moving across the timeline, as it comes to each one of these scripts, it obeys the information that's there. Now that's one form of functionality. If we were talking about buttons, for example, buttons are a little bit different. Let me click on the button here. And if I click on the button, it shows me down here on this tab once again. Now the actions are being associated with the button that's selected. Now buttons are a little bit different in the sense that they're really designed for human interaction. So for someone using a program that we're creating, we need to create a way for them to interact with it. And this means we would use a button. In that sense, the button is looking for something very specific. Unlike the timeline, which is just waiting for the playback head to come in and bump into one of the scripts there, what the button is looking for is the user to do something to that button. Now, if I go in here and I type on and then open parentheses, it will give me a list of the different options that buttons are looking for. For example, the button may be looking for somebody to press down on it, push the mouse button down. It may also be looking for a release, which is when the mouse button goes back up. You can also release outside of the button, or roll over the button, or roll off the button, or drag something over the button, or drag something off of the button. It also goes and allows us to look at different keys. For example, did you press the left or the right key, the home key, or the delete key, the enter key. So you can go in and say not only execute this button in the event that somebody rolls over it or clicks on it, but also if someone presses one of these keys, you can do the same thing as well. However, everything that we're talking about with regard to the button is really based up upon some aspect of human interactivity. Now, just quickly, let's go in and just create a very quick script here. So if I go and say, on release, I want you, how about, to stop? And we'll be rather vague about it. Not the world's uh, most intelligent script here, but certainly very easy to type. Now, if we go and run the movie, there we go. So here it is. It shows up. And we have our little horse uh, move, movie morphing here. And the button acts like a button. It doesn't do a whole heck of a lot because we didn't give, really give it a script to tell it how to behave. But there are no errors, and it works as planned. Now, if we go back in here, let me just go and click on my button for a moment and go in. I'm going to grab the button script here. I'm just going to cut it out of here and show you what often happens. Now, with a lot of my students, I find that what happens is they get rather confused as to what they're clicking on. And they'll come in here and they'll say, I want to attach a script to the button. And they'll go up here and they'll say, there, I've selected the button. Well, if you look down here, you've actually selected the frame. Or you get behaviors like, let me click here and then click here. Once again, you've selected the frame. And the real difference here is if I go in the actions here and paste my button script, oh, there it is. And now I go in and say, OK, I want you to run this. What happens over here automatically is it gives me an error message that says, hey, mouse events are permitted only for button instances. Now, if you've ever run into this, what it's basically saying is, hey, you, you put a button script on something that isn't a button. So in that case, you just need to figure out what you did last and go and say, oh, there it is. And we've all done this, by the way. Let me cut that out of there. And now we go and click back on the button itself, the object that I want to attach the script to. And that can be confirmed by this tab here. And then go make sure it's in there. Now, one last thing with regard to other objects. For example, this is a movie clip here, this horse morphing into a cow and cow morphing into a horse. And what I would need to do here is also do a similar thing to talk to a movie clip. Now, in a movie clip, it's somewhat slightly different because I have an instance of a movie clip sitting here on the stage. And if I want to talk to it and be specific, I would have to give it a name. So down here in my properties window, I would select and say, let's just call this horse cow. 
Okay, so now I can refer to it by name. And I can click on the object itself, and once again, the tab tells me the actions are being associated with a movie clip, which is exactly what I want. Now, unlike the button where we say on, whatever event, what we're looking for with a movie clip is similar, but it's on clip event. So if I type on clip event and then open a parentheses, once again it gives me a long list of various choices here that I can go in. And oftentimes what we'll find is that we want to load some sort of scripts in. When this movie clip gets called, we want to have it load some information into the background. So it will run something, an initialization program, when we load it in. We can also say, hey, every time the playback head in the movie clip enters a certain frame, I want you to execute a script, etc. And so we can go in and write several different handlers that say on clip event load, do all these things, and then, hey, on clip event enter frame, I want you to do something else. But for the most part, if we go in here, let me just double click load, then I can go in here and I can set scripts so that we'll follow a certain set of rules when the clip loads in for the first time. Now once again, this is very specific to movie clips. If I try to attach this to a button, I would get an error message saying, uh-uh, not going to happen. And also if I were to try to attach it here to the frame script, then it won't happen either. Also, if I were to try to take something such as a simple stop and put it on a button script, it's going to say, I don't understand this because I'm a button. I need some sort of criteria. I need to know what I'm looking for. Am I looking for a release? Am I looking for a rollover? What does it tell me? And then I'll be happy to do the stop. But until then, I'm not going to work. Okay, so fundamentally, all I really want to get through today is that if you want to attach a script to an object, that's wonderful. Make sure you're attaching it to the right object, and that can be easily confirmed by going and looking at the tab when you open up your actions window to make sure that you're associating that script with the correct object. That's all I have for today. And as always, if we can help you at LearningCraft with any of your training needs, please let us know. You can get in touch with us at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Thanks for dropping by, and I'll see you real soon.